Blind Guides, Episode 7, Interview with Blind Views. Welcome back, everybody, to the Blind Justice Channel and our, our series we've been doing where we interview and discuss with fellow visually impaired and blind content creators different ways, uh, tips, techniques, training, and devices that they use to help mitigate uh, the disability and to overcome obstacles in everyday life. With us today, we have Blind Views uh, with the Blind Views YouTube channel. Welcome. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so tell us about your YouTube channel, like uh, how long you've had it and what's the focus? All right. Uh, I've been on YouTube for probably, I'm, a, I'm horrible with time, <laughs> probably about four years, I guess, something like that, three, four years. My channel's kind of all over the place. Um, it's basically my blind views. I'm, I'm a visually impaired, opinionated person. So I usually just kind of tell you what I'm feeling, um, the way I see it, quote unquote. <laughs> and uh, I basically started my channel was I was talking to my wife about maybe doing the RV thing and go see some things while I can still see a little bit. Yeah. And uh, so I started researching the nomads and the RVers. And uh, in the process, I just started talking about them. So I talk about other channels and suggest things to other people. And if I find a product I like, I do a review. Um, I actually paint and draw a little bit. So I do that. So it's pretty much about me and my blind views, whatever I feel like yakking about <laughs> at the time. Yeah, I love I love the, uh, the title of the the use of a uh, language there. And it's interesting when, when I talk with people, how much language has like visual components to it, just, just in the syntax in the wording itself. Right. Uh, you know, and, and it's really interesting too, because in the, from my experience, listening to other um, blind content creators or in different communities with visual impairment, like a lot of people, just continue to use that language uh, and, and, and don't really take the extra brain power and time to stop and change their language, like forcibly change their language to avoid using visual, visual words. For instance, uh, people will say, yeah, I watched this on TV or I saw that, or I, I looked that up, you know? Yeah. You know, and, it, and uh, I've always uh -huh. kind of been a, I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See you later. Yeah. I've always kind of been a, a oddball in the sense that I, I try to think my words out before speaking them and try to choose them, you know, carefully, but every once in a while uh, I'll uh, relax a bit and <laughs> just let whatever fly out. But yeah, I, I kind of talk that way and well, I get the, uh, well, you don't act blind or you don't look blind thing. So yeah, to, uh, confuse them even more. I Yeah, just, exactly. Uh, he, said he's, he said he watched a TV show. <laughs> like, uh, <That's> right. <laughs> what, do you want, what do you want me to say that I listened to the TV show? Yeah, that both are accurate. Like, sure. Like I didn't, yeah. <laughs> like that's really interesting because in, in the brain, um, there's a study on this. If you want, I, I think I can get you a link to the study, but they, they did a, uh, they were curious with people from different vision loss, what parts of the brain are used to process information uh, oh. that's described, you know? Yeah. So, so they had, they had people with perfect vision, look at a painting, right. During an MRI, like they were in the MRI machine and they were looking at a painting or they had it set up somewhere in the machine so they can look at it while they were doing the MRI of the brain. And then they had people of varying degrees of vision loss go in and they had somebody describe auditorily, you know, vocally yeah. the painting to them. And it was the same parts of the brain. The visual cortex was lighting up. Oh, and wow. so it was really, it's really interesting. Yeah. The visual cortex is like this massive part of the brain. Uh, it's like 70% of our computing power of the brain is dedicated to the visual cortex. And when you have vision loss, that, that big, you know, majority portion doesn't just take a break. It, it right. goes to work and it, it rewires to the other senses and says, okay, I mean, let me get input from your sense of smell, from your sense of taste and sense of touch from your sense of hearing. And it gets, it goes to the visual cortex for the processing power. So it's really cool. 
Yeah, people people often ask me questions about it. Well, I have retinitis pigmentosa. I yeah. guess I'll tell you that. So I do have a little bit of vision, um, not very much, but a little bit. So people always ask me questions, and I'm happy to ask. I'd rather have you ask me a question than you know assume or talk behind my back. Right. But, um, you know, they'll always say like, uh, "Do your do you have super hearing now?" and all that other stuff. And I was like, "Well, no, but our our vision is it." I mean. Just think about when you hear a noise, do you just, do you put your hand to your ear and go, what was that? No, your head snaps around it and you automatically look in that direction to see what's going on. You know, if you smell something, you look to see what it is. You don't just sniff in the air. So yeah, when that's taken away, you just rely on other things more. Right. You know, you, you learn that, which was an interesting part <laughs> as I was slowly, because with the RP that I have, it's like a really gradual thing. And, uh, so yeah. So, when you, when so you tell, first, us, tell us about that. Like how, um, uh, when did, when did you get the onset, how long you've been dealing with it and, and what's that process been like for you? Well, I, uh, I am 57 now. I was, I guess, officially diagnosed, uh, around 42, but after I was diagnosed, I kind of was thinking about things that happened earlier on. I was like, Hmm. I wonder if that was, you know, because of the RP. Um, back when I was in high school, actually, uh, I was having problems with with light. And uh, uh, an eye doctor back then, he he prescribed me sunglasses. And I actually went to a Catholic or private school, and I was always getting in trouble for wearing sunglasses in class. <laughs> and I was like, I have a prescription. I have to have my little paper out. Yeah. And uh, show them that I was, you know, prescribed these sunglasses. But then as time went on, I, I noticed, like I said, after I was diagnosed, I was like, hmm, I remember that when I couldn't see that and that. And, and you know, so it kind of clicked. But um, yeah, I was diagnosed and they said that I had retinitis pigmentosa, explained what it was. Um, and it was a, there was no treatment, no cure. Uh, there were some things that they have now, but doesn't apply to me because I do have sight. But um, it, you're, that slowly I could, be old and die before I go totally blind, or I could be blind in a year, five years, 10. They just didn't know. Yeah. Um, so I was going in regularly and getting the, the visual field test and uh, just tell me my progression or as, as it was progressing, as I was losing my eyesight. And uh, right now I'm at right around, I think I haven't been to the eye doctor in a while because of our awesome healthcare in the United States. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I can't afford to go regularly anymore, but, um, I was at 12, uh, degrees the last time I went. Um, and I don't know for sighted people, sighted people have around 210 degrees field of field of vision. So I'm down to 12. So yeah. I can see that little bit. Um, so do you, um, uh, do you move your head back and forth a lot to try to scan um, a lot of scanning? Yeah. A lot of scanning. Um, when I'm out and about, I, I use a cane. It's a, a foldable. I use a roller tip. Yeah. Um, because if I look down to see where I'm going, I hit my head and run into things. And if yep. I look up, I trip over things. So my cane, you know, feels the ground out and the bumps and the, that and this and that. So I can kind of look ahead a little bit um, and try not to hit my head on low branches or anything like that. Do you wear uh, a hat or anything like that to try to give you a little bit of... Um protection or, or forewarning that there's an obstacle sometimes i do wear a ball cap yeah a baseball cap um i always wear sunglasses i i'm very very light sensitive now and my yeah. depth perception is way off you know i'll go to sit down a glass set a glass down on the table and i'll slam it down because it looks you know <laughs> it's like oh it wasn't there it's <laughs> it's not that far away so yeah my depth perception is off too uh when um, when you're well have you heard of um what is it? The buzz clip or the Sunu band, their obstacle detectors. Have you heard of those? No, I haven't. No. Yeah. So they're both sonar, uh, I believe, and they, they vibrate. The buzz clip is something that kind of you can clip on typically like at your chest level and uh -huh. then uh, shoots out a, a sonar. And then if it, there's an obstacle, it'll vibrate. You can set the distance on it on both of these. The, the Sunu band um, is when you wear on your wrist and does the same thing. 
I think you get more coverage with the Sunu band because you're, you know, you're, as you're moving your hand back and forth, right. Uh, when you're walking, you get more, uh, coverage of, of potential obstacles. And so you get a vibration, you know, that there's something that you could run into and you go. Yeah. So really, really handy tools for just out and about walking around, um, mobility stuff. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I use the same thing. I use a white cane and a roller tip and, if I'm not accompanied with somebody or if I'm in a place where I'm not too familiar, then I'll use my Sunu band to help me uh, not get clotheslined or bang my head. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, I do have that little bit of advantage because I do have that, that little sighted people say you got tunnel vision. Yeah. So I got that little bit of a sight so I can actually, you know, like you said, scan always heads, always on a swivel right. when I'm, when I'm alone, which basically I'm not too often. Uh, I'm usually with my wife who was, went through some of the mobility training to be a sighted guide. Nice. And uh, because I, you know, I haven't driven in years, so she has to take me anywhere I need to go. Yeah. Um, Do you want to talk about uh, that, the transition from, you know, the independence of being able to drive to, to not? Yeah. Well, um, I guess I'll start, I'll say that I was, I, I worked many different jobs over the years. But at the end, I was, uh, I was a firefighter, in my local area. And I did, I worked for a company that did fire hose testing. And, uh, we would travel to six different states and go to different fire companies and, uh, strip the, the, the engines, the rigs of all the hose test it according to, uh, NFPA 1963 specifications anyway. It's, uh, and then, so I started when we. When we started doing that, when I started doing that, I actually was driving and the whole crew and we would stay and everything. And as time went on and I was speaking with my boss, he kept me on and uh, just, I couldn't drive any longer. Uh, they took my license. The, the, uh, my eye doctor sent things into PennDOT, the Department of Transportation. So uh, I surrendered my license and all that. Uh, my, my boss was real cool. He, he moved me off the, out of the field and into the office and let me do phone calls and schedule things as long as he could, as my eyesight deteriorated, he kept yeah. me on as long as possible. He was really cool about it. And he was an awesome guy. And then it just got to the point where I couldn't work anymore. Yeah. But, um, during my, uh, mobility training, the guy told me, he said, this is, this is cool. He said, you didn't know this, but when you were a firefighter, you were training for this the entire time. Right. Um, because when you go into that burning building, everything's black. You can't see. We always have a tool and we always, we call it sound the floor or sound the steps you right. thump, you know, to make sure that there's something there to step on and all that stuff. And so when he was teaching me cane techniques and everything, he's like, man, you're picking this up. Awesome. Because of all, you know, you use this in your firefighting. So that was a pretty easy transition for me. Um, but the, the dependence part was a little rough. Yeah. And, uh, I always tell everybody too, that when it got to the point where my job wasn't possible to do any more that I was doing and not being able to drive and everything, it's almost like going through a grieving process. Right. You know, I did the, oh, woe is me for, you know, a couple of days. And then it was like, okay, you know, shake it off, man. You know, this, is, you're still getting up in the morning. It's, it's not, you're not dead, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, but I went through that little, little grieving process. And then I, I got over it and it was like, you know, it's not that bad. I can still do. And then of course, sighted people don't realize the amount of things that we do have at our disposal, you know, they, cause they don't need it. And I didn't at the time either until I was like, you know, I went to the, the blind association are like, okay, we're going to hook you up with a mobility trainer and this and that and that. And, oh, you have light sensitivity. Well, there's this wide array of lighting and all kinds of stuff. I was like, wow, I never knew all this was out, <laughs> you know? So yeah. there is a lot of, a lot of technology out there nowadays. It's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, let's go, let's get into that a little bit. Um, so what kind of, uh, navigation do you use a navigation app, anything specific, or do you just use what's No, that? um, I just use the cane. Um, I, I do, I, I try to rely on the site that I have as much as I can, but I do 
I do take advantage of, of the things that, that I need. I'm not like, oh, well, I can still see. I don't need this cane. And yeah, plus yeah. the cane, another thing is it, it's as much for other people, I say, as it is for me. Right. Because again, oh, he doesn't act blind. He doesn't look blind. So when I have that cane, and I'm a big dude, I'm, I'm six foot one. Um, I weigh like 245. I'm covered in tattoos. So I look like a big old bear. And when I'm rumbling through the, the grocery store and I run over some kid, yeah, and I was like, oh, the big scary tattooed man, this knocked my kid down. But when I have the cane, you see moms grabbing their kid and pulling them out of the way. Right. So, you know, it's like I, I always say, it's for as much for everyone else as it is, it is for me. <laughs> yeah. So, so then in the grocery store, do you uh, pull the cart behind you and use the cane in front of you? Uh, usually I, I just grab a hold of the, the cart and my wife pulls it and I just yep. follow around. Or yeah. um, if we go places, again, when I went through my mobility training, um, she was taught, she went through, and my son also um, at the time. But um, yeah, to, to be a sighted guy, to learn how when I grab her arm not to do this and just walk normal and if it's a skinny thing, how to, you know, move her arm back to let me know that I need to scooch over and it's a skinny aisle or something. Yeah. Um, but mainly if I have her and I can just walk behind her and follow her, I have that enough vision that I just kind of let lock in on her back or her head or something. Right. And I just go. So if she goes and goes, so basically if she's going to fall off a cliff, I'm going to follow her. <laughs> Cause I just watch her and I just go where she goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, uh, for navigation, like I, I use uh, an app called blind square and I don't know if you heard of that before, but it's, it's really good um, program. It will inform you of uh, intersections, um, you know, street names, different names of uh, shops and businesses as, as you're approaching, like it'll give you distance and direction to different oh, okay. uh, shops. It's really handy. It kind of gives you auditorily what people get visually, right. you know, that, that they don't even think about, you know, they're, they're driving down or walking down the, the, the road and they're seeing, you know, the sign for Kohl's and Target and Walmart and, yeah, and Taco yeah. Bell and all, you know, all this stuff they're seeing it. They're, they're not necessarily seeing it and thinking those things. Uh, you know, they're seeing the, the brand or the, the sign and, and, they just know it's there, right? Right. Where with Blind Square, you're getting it, you know, in an auditory sense. It'll tell you, you know, this store, two o'clock, hundred meters or whatever. And it's it's really cool. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a really cool program called Blind Square. Uh, what about? Um, yeah, and I'll send you a list too. I'll email you a whole list of things that I use and have tried and um, tips and tricks and and anybody that's uh, that's watching or listening, if you're if you're interested in that that list just shoot us an email uh insight is free at gmail.com and we'll be happy to share that with you as well um yeah i was showed and a few things um during my training and everything mostly it was the mobility stuff um and he actually the guy was he was great he worked with me for i don't even know how long it was it didn't seem like real long but it was a, a lengthy period of time yeah. And uh, since, since I did have some vision, he actually blindfolded me and, you know, took me into the mall and said, go find me a blue tie, you know, and stuff nice. like that. And, uh, you know, find the escalator, uh, tell me where the end, you know, he'd take me in and then take me in the middle of the mall and say, okay, find the exit, which all those things, again, being a firefighter, you go in, you do a right hand search or a left hand search, you know, yep. And when your bell starts going off, you got to get out of there because you have, you know, like three minutes of air left. Yeah. So I was used to all that. So I, I was used to going into places and going, okay, did it, you know, and knowing where exits were and, you know, like you know, smell and you go, okay, that's Aunt Annie's pretzels. And I know from being here all my life that the next door is this and the next, so right. I kind of knew that stuff and how to do things. And, you know, he taught me things like, you know, listen for that rumble, that little moan and you go, and, and remember, they don't put elevators and stuff on outside. You know, it's always usually in the middle somewhere. Right. And you listen for that hum and stuff. But he was great. I mean, he taught me all kinds of awesome stuff. Um, showed me, uh, again, all the different cane techniques, how to uh, 
you know, use your hands to, to fill those flaps for a revolving door. Yeah. They go, but you know, to do that, to, to go in, to use revolving doors and all that stuff. Yeah. Hey, lots of stuff, uh, going up and down steps, the cane techniques. Um, can you, uh, hear the difference when your cane hits, um, the wall to, to be able to discern like what the material is, material is, um, when, when your cane butts up against the wall. Yeah, that's that's one of those things that it took me a while to get used to. Um, that and walking um, out, like say downtown or something, and differentiating between, say, walking by an intersection or a a setback. You know, like like doors or something that are set way back in. Yeah. Or, or is it, you know, like the entrance to a, a parking garage or an intersection or something that, you know, that, that little bit of a differentiation that you can tell it, okay, I'm not walking beside buildings anymore. There's a, there's a gap there. Right. Is it again, is it 10 feet deep? Is it not, is it five, you know, all yeah. that stuff took me a while to get used to the same thing when I first, you know, started really losing it and my site and I'd get to the, to the grocery store and you get out of the car and it's like, I hear traffic. It's like, oh, oh, you know, so my head's on a swivel. I'm freaking out because I don't know. Now I know I can tell again. I, you know, you just get used to it and it just happens, I guess, and you train yourself. But it's yeah. like, okay, that car's about just like you do with your vision. Oh, that car's about 20 feet away. That one's, you know, half a block away. That one's right there. But at first it's like, oh, shit, cars. Ah, you know, <laughs> like, and it, it overwhelms you and you don't know if you're going to get run over and anything. But now it's as time goes by and you, readjust from using your eyes to different things you go okay yeah i hear cars i hear car doors i hear people getting in and out of their cars i hear all this and when you have that limited sight instead of on that swivel breaking your neck all the time you just learn to go okay yeah pick up audible, audible things you know when, when you're out when you're out walking about uh whether it be in stores or you know, on the sidewalk and you happen to run into an obstacle um you get clotheslined by something you know something that doesn't get hit by your cane um yeah. do you try to you know address that with anybody have you ever tried to you know find out he, who's responsible for this obstacle and, and try to get him to to fix it uh sometimes i i have um i i usually don't go usually don't go too many places unfamiliar to me alone yeah one because i usually get driven there so and my wife's usually with me and uh around locally i pretty much know most things and i also was a firefighter so i know the police officers the city council and all that and a lot of people will let me know that i mean i'll i'll get a text or something or even a knock on the door and say hey you know next week they're going to be ripping up sidewalks and putting in you know, drains or something. So yeah, if you happen to go down that way, you know, so I do get heads up a lot, but if not, um, yeah, I, I usually, I really haven't run into too many things. And again, I'm, I usually don't go anywhere unfamiliar. Right. Alone. Yeah. I've ended up in like in the middle of an intersection that was under construction because it wasn't properly marked. So let me know, like, you know, there, there was things on the sidewalk, but nothing indicating like, Hey, this is, uh, trying to block the sidewalk, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so you just go around and then keep going and you end up in the middle of a construction zone, like with pits everywhere and heavy, heavy, uh, equipment and everything. And I'm like, ah, that's not safe. So then yeah. I, I try to address that with, you know, whatever the mis municipality is, it's, uh, over right. it, or if it's a, a state, you know, DOT, then I'll, I'll let them know like, Hey, you guys can put a simple device that's motion activated. Uh, audio message like hey sidewalk closed ahead backtrack right. to the intersection and cross to the north side you know something simple like that yeah and, i did actually now come to think of it when you said that about the the whole <laughs> well, during my mobility training um i was pretty deep into it and my instructor he would he would walk behind me but he would let me go and you know he wouldn't let me do anything really crazy but he would let me go and see how i would deal with things and one time i did I was walking and, and I don't know why I did. I kind of noticed it, but I didn't see, see it. And yeah. I heard a bunch of guys yelling, yay, hey, hey, 
go to your left, go to your left. And I was like looking around like me, are you talking to me? <laughs> and they were like, yeah. And my instructor came up then and he pointed me, he said, look over here, you know, and he told me where to look. And I looked and I was walking straight for a bunch of guys had a big hole dug in the sidewalk and half in the street. And there was like five guys with hard hats and standing around yelling, go to your <laughs> left, go to your <laughs> left. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny. Sometimes they'll like, they'll put, maybe, maybe they'll put out like a small cone or put something out, you know, and, and it probably has a sign on it that says, you know, sidewalk close ahead or right. ahead or, you know, detour or something, you know, something that affect that visually you're like, okay, that, yeah, that's great. They marked it. But if you don't have the visual cues then you're, <laughs> you just bump something with your cane and you, you keep moving, you know? Yeah. And another egg, time, you know? another time I remember too, is when, when I was in the mall, they had a table. I guess they were going to put a display up or they were in the process of, but it was in the middle of an aisle and I was walking and the cane missed it. It was, I guess around waist high. So I really didn't, I was looking ahead and I didn't see it. Yeah. And the cane just missed it. And I mean, I hit it with my shin and my elbow. I was like, Oh man, <laughs> yeah, that shit hurt. Yeah. So there are some times there are some weird goofy off the wall things, but all right, Mrs. Justice got a question. What you got? I got a question. If someone, sure. if you're walking down the street and someone is yelling at you, "Hey, move to your left," what is a non-offensive way to identify you? So, like, would would it would it would it offend you if somebody yelled, "Hey, blind man, move to your left"? <laughs> like, would, me, would that me, be okay? For me, no. I I'm not offended by <laughs> be, being called blind, or I I don't. I don't uh, cringe if someone says I have a right. disability or anything like that, because you have the ability to see I don't. So I do have a disability. Um, you have the advantage of this and that. And I just like any other thing is just a handicap. It is a handicap. You don't like to think of yourself as not being able to do anything, but right. I can do just about anything, but there are some things that I just can't do anymore. And I accept that. And I do have my limitations. So no, I, I mean, even in a grocery store, I, <laughs> <laughs> I always say, because every once in a while, the one time particularly, um, my wife and I were shopping and she went ahead of me and I was kind of like scanning the shelf, looking for a bag of chips. And I reach up and I grab these bag of chips and I hear someone down the, down the aisle say, how does he see what he's getting? And I turned my head around and I said, I'm, I'm blind. I'm not deaf. You can ask me, honestly, I will, <laughs> I will answer your question. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's very common. Like when we're out, um, people will speak to her about me as if I wasn't there, you know, in the third person. And I'll ask yeah. her, "How does he do this? How, is can he do that?" And I'm like, and she and she she's really good at like directing them to talk to me. Like, well, talk to him. He's right here. Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> and yeah, sometimes fun. she'll 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 get snarky with them and say the same thing. Well, he's he's blind. He's not deaf. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I mean, I'm I'm the same way. If you know, if there's somebody that I don't know, <laughs> I'll address them. However, and if it offends them, tell me and I'll correct it. But yeah, if you yell, yo, blind dude, you know, <laughs> if you're, if you're steering me away from danger, you can yeah. call me whatever you want to right. get my attention is fine. Yeah. Me. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm not offended at all. Like, yeah, I recognize I can't see. And, and if that's the way that you can briefly get my attention to let me know there's an obstacle or a danger then great thank you you know yeah or yeah. perhaps a man with the blind or the white cane if, sure. if someone's uncomfortable say I, i'm i'm asking more on behalf of you know the the, the listeners and viewers right now that sure. don't know like it would feel awkward to say hey guy in a green shirt when like when you're blind maybe you don't know you have a green shirt on <laughs> yeah <laughs> or, yeah. or just something generic like hey sir or hey ma'am and like and like uh are they talking to me like you right, know, you yeah i know i know the voice is coming my way but i don't know if there's other people that are, that haven't moved and haven't made their presence known to me you know right well and you know? that's a that's a really good question a legitimate question and especially in this time and age that you know we're pronouns are a big thing you can yeah. see a, uh, sure what you perceive as a male and you say hey sir or he oh, okay. looking at it and like oh i don't identify and so i could see how people would be kind of hesitant about just yelling out yo blind dude <laughs> yeah that's that's interesting too like being able to identify um people based off of what they present vocally right right like i I, uh, 
like when we lived on the West Coast, I think I was a little more cautious with using pronouns um, just because it was more common for people to, to you know, have identified differently, different ways. Um, right. And not necessarily, you know, associate that octave of, of voice <laughs> with with whatever the, their preferred pronoun is, you know. Yeah. Um, whatever the range is, and so yeah, it's it's interesting. Like just coming at, coming at it from that perspective, not being able to see, you know, if if they are presenting as female, you know, visually or male, you know, if they're right. if they, you know, or even yeah, it, it's just I don't know. It's it's interesting. Uh, so with um, let's go to uh, OCR. Do you use any kind of OCR device, op- optical character recognition? software or app or anything uh no no i i don't um again i i rely as much on my my visual abilities i still have as i can um again i i i draw i paint yeah um so i do have that little bit and and i i look at everything i probably see more than sighted people do just for the fact that i know my sight is diminishing and Hopefully, like the dog said, you might die before you go totally blind. But one day I won't be able to see. Yeah. And I keep that in my head. So I look at every little thing, every little crack, every I mean, if I go out in the morning and there's I catch the sight of a spider web stretched between two plants and there's dew dripping off, I soak it all in every little thing I can, nice. you know. And 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 people always say that you probably that's why you draw and paint because you have that. And I can only see so much at a time as I'm painting and drawing. And <laughs> yeah. so I, I, I take those little details and I, I soak them in as much as I possibly can. Trust me, man. <laughs> um, there's so one, there's a very, uh, it's a free app. It's commonly used. It's called a seeing AI, S E E I N G seeing AI. Uh-huh. Uh, and you can get it on your phone uh, for free. And it does all kinds of stuff. It has an OCR on it, so it will read short text. Um, you know, it will read documents to you, uh, books, um, your mail. Um, it can tell you what color things are. Like if you're having problems with color, it will um, identify banknotes. You know what what. Uh, oh yeah. You know currency, like if it's a one or a five, or uh, you know tactilely. Have you noticed? Uh, with U.S. currency, that the the one dollar bill is more grainy uh, texturally than like the fives, tens, twenties, fifties, and hundreds. Have you noticed yeah. that? Yes. Yeah. So like I I can identify a one dollar bill from anything else, but I, I, <laughs> yeah. I can't I can't tell if it's a five, ten, twenty, or fifty or hundred dollar bill. You know, unless I um, just know because somebody I trust told me, or I use you know something right. like seeing AI to to read it for me. Um, yeah. That's a really handy tool uh, for all kinds of different application. What about um, at the house in the kitchen? Do you use anything uh, to help you around the kitchen? Um, uh, around the kitchen, basically, uh, basically, it's just. I mean, well, <laughs> the joke is, is when I, when I make my wife mad, she just moves the furniture a little bit. So that, yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. the thing. It's like, everything's in a spot. So I go and I grab and I reach and it's there. Yeah. And so every, you know, it's not like I live in a, with a whole bunch of people, it's just me and her. Yeah. And so, you know, everything's there. Um, for a while I, we were doing the, uh, like the gallon of milk, the gallon of orange juice, the gallon, you know, a gallon's a gallon. Right. So we'd put like a, a rubber band around one and nice. the other one not and stuff like that. Just so when I, instead of looking and searching, yeah, I could just reach and grab and go, nope, that's not the milk. Okay. So just little things like that we would do. Right. Do you um, use uh, bump dots for anything? No. So do you know what you, you're familiar with that, with what those are? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Of them. So it, the, for the viewer or listener, a bump dot is, is basically like a little rubber or plastic, um, uh, dot that has a a sticky back like that you can stick on things you know on your microwave button or on your dishwasher button or your dryer or washer machine like or your controller you know for your tv uh you can put them on anything they're just a little raised tactile thing to let you know okay 
for the microwave, I think we have ours on our like 30 second um, button. So all I have to do is just go up and go hit that. Yeah. Every time I hit it, I know it's an increment of 30 seconds. So if I need to cook something for a couple minutes, just hit it four times, bam, bam, you know. Right. Um, for the, I think for the dishwasher, we have it set um, because the, the dial on the dishwasher has a little indentation. So it's set to the start point. So all I have right. to do is put one finger on the, on the bump dot, rotate that dial around until I feel the indentation is pointing at the, uh, the dot. And then right. I know I'm on the right setting. So it's, you know, stuff like that, like where you're talking about cre finding a creative solution that's a tactile indication. Hey, this is a milk jug versus this is a, an orange juice jug. Um, he said he uses rubber bands. I don't know if you heard that. Like, you, like they'll mark it with a rubber band on the handle or something. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't use a whole lot of like, um, I'll use like the main thing is, is like I said, my wife's great. It's, you know, cause I tell her if I want to hunt for my food, I'll get a gun and go to the woods. So I don't want, you know, I want, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's here. I know it's always here. So yeah. put it there. And that's, you know, that's pretty much the way it is. And she's good. You know, she'll say, watch out the cupboard door is open you know she's putting dishes away or something yeah you know, the cabinet door is open or the dishwasher is open so i would don't yeah, trip see, over that's that cool. you have your wife is uh trained with with the stuff like you mentioned and it's just the two of you so you know that's really yeah. cool we've got four kids in the house and right. you know a couple, a couple toddlers a couple teenagers and um so it's always a a you know, a minefield around the house, you know, right. leaving, leaving things out or leaving a cabinet open or not exactly. putting something back in its proper place. Like there's a running <laughs> joke in the house. Like, you know, don't move a blind guy stuff yep. because I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep my things, you know, in the same spot. And then I go to get it and it's gone. I'm like, okay, guys, <laughs> who's playing it? He's playing a game on dad, you know? And yep. usually it's one of the toddlers just interested or they ran off with it or whatever, but. So most um, of, most of my stuff is is like uh on the computer, you know, the monitor. I I have my font ginormous, okay, things like that, so I can actually see. Do you use a uh, Zoom Text or any other um, magnification software? Yeah, just I I have Windows 10, so the the I use the magnifier that comes with that. Yeah, and and there is also a program that it will read reads the, everything to me the only thing the only problem with that is it reads everything yeah http forward slash force and i'm like okay i can't i don't have time for all that <laughs> yeah i think that's the that's the built-in one with windows right i forget yeah what it's yeah yeah that i tried that before and it's it's very clunky not too intuitive um, right like on the on the apple systems they have voiceover and it's really really fluid really intuitive like you can use different hand gestures on your on your phone or tablet uh, there's different keystrokes and um, shortcuts on the keyboard for your computer. Yeah. Uh, and then on the PC, there's a, a program called JAWS, J-A-W-S, um, I think made by Freedom Scientific. And they it's made, it's a really in-depth program. Like if you're wanting to get more active on your computer use and, um, you know, doing stuff in a professional capacity, like that's, one of the best things you can get is a uh, jaws and do some jaws training on your computer. Nice. Yeah. And uh, again, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I do have that, that vision and the vision I do have that small, it is, it's just like anybody else's it's correctable with lenses. And I've had one cataract surgery already in my early forties. Yeah. Um, so, so that, that tiny bit that I can see, I can see very well, you know, cool. Good. And you, and you, like you, like you mentioned, you savor it. And I love that, that you, um, yeah, yeah, I do. I, I really do. Yeah. Um, I do have to, uh, rely on like, uh, making videos when I, I just do talking head videos. I don't really do anything crazy, Sure. but, um, I, I have to rely on whatever equipment I have, like a camera. I have to just set it on the auto and hope everything works out because if I, say focus it or auto correct the the white balance or color correct and i make it look okay to me everybody else can be going, <laughs> what is that you know so yeah <laughs> i rely on that auto setting for everything <laughs> yeah the um i you know i for walking about i use a gopro hero 7 black that i that is on a chest mount and that has a stabilizer built into it so right. it's um it's not all bouncing around and stuff yeah. um so that helps for for the video quality for people 
not getting nauseous while I'm out walking around doing videos. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, speaking of wearable camera systems, do you have you heard any of those, or do you use any of those for anything, or or even the uh, have you have you used your phone for a video assistance, whether it be your wife or a friend to do like FaceTime or Skype or Zoom or be my eyes to say, hey, I dropped something. I'm trying to find this right thing in the store or something in the house. Like, have you used that no. at all? No, I haven't actually. Um, the only things I've was while well, I was shown, I really I used it, but I didn't I didn't need it um, where I was showed a. Uh, little device that for instance when he says go go find a blue tie yeah after i went in and he just wanted to see what i would do but i just walked and i went into the store and i kind of fumbled around and asked somebody hey can you help me find a blue tie you know yep. he's, that's awesome but then he he pulled out this little device and said now take this and check it out and it was just you'd pass it over and it would say you know blue or white or right. you know, just tell you the color things and then the other thing he showed me was a uh, a reader for the grocery store. Yep. You, it would tell you, you know, if you picked up a can of soup and you scan, it would say, you know, Campbell's chicken noodle soup, whatever ounces, and it costs $1.29. And it just read everything. It was like, wow, this is yeah. awesome. Well, so that's what I was, I mentioned that earlier, the uh, Seeing AI app, it does yeah. both of those functions. So it'll tell you color. Um, there's a setting that you can see and you know, determine color. Uh, there's yeah. a setting that will do short text. So if it, you know, you need, it'll read, I've walked, I've done a video, I think on the channel where, um, I've walked with that running and just gone up and down and left and right with my phone and trying to get any, any signs and stuff. And it was really cool. Cause a lot of the information that it would read to me, um, said on that, sh that short text setting was aisle names. Like it'd be like, you know, J 12 and. So oh, like wow. I'm like, okay. And I started getting this, this alphanumeric. And as I was walking, I realized, oh, that's, those are the names of the aisles. Cool. So, <laughs> so then it, I was also trying to think, I think I was trying to use the Walmart app because I was trying to find a specific item and you can go in the app and it'll tell you, you know, you need to go to this aisle and find the item. So I already knew what aisle name I needed, like aisle, you know, alphanumeric and then i was right. walking with that and i was getting alphanumerics and i was all right sweet and i already have a general layout of the store so i knew what sector of the store i was in i just need to pinpoint the aisle and i did that but now i'm still on an aisle with you know hundreds of items yeah. or thousands <laughs> of items like okay now how do i limit this down and that's where it became really hard you know um, so there's still not really a good um app that gives you that information without another human interface. And right. so one of those apps is called Be My Eyes. And uh, it's, again, it's a free app you can get. And it's got, you got millions of, of sighted people that you can make a call to and they'll look through the video camera of your phone and will guide you in. You're like, okay, yeah, you're on the right aisle. You need to go left, you know, and they'll just tell you wow. go up and down and then they'll find it for you. But the, uh, the Seeing AI app will also, you can scan barcodes uh, like on the items and it'll help you, it'll give you a beep as you're getting closer, you know, beep, 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 and then you're like, it'll read it and it'll say, you know, Campbell soup or whatever, and yeah. tell you the, the stuff. That's on it. awesome. Yeah. That, that's really cool that there's sighted people out there that, that do that for you too. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So if you don't have, you know, somebody that, that you is available for doing a FaceTime call or a Skype call, then you can, there's a whole millions of, you know, people that are, that are ready and, and waiting for, a call to help yeah yeah it's really cool and, that is and very, it's very all over the world too so like different languages and yeah it's a really cool app um that is so cool that just reminded me that uh when i was still working towards the end guys would always say it's over there you know like a, yeah i need to drill it's right there or it's and they're pointing you know i'm like i what i can't see you pointing i can't see where you're pointing <laughs> yeah yeah people yeah, specifically like the the over there thing is is interesting um there's there's some some parts where if i'm asking like in general terms like if just give me uh general direction to go yeah i won't i won't ask for more clarification when they say it's over there because i i'll go off of where they point their voice basically the sound of the voice traveled to my right so i'm going to mm -hmm. go to my right you know <laughs> even if they say hey go it's it's on your it's to your left and if, but if their voice traveled to the right, sometimes I'll just go the way their voice said, 
Yeah. And if if that was incorrect, then they're usually pretty good at telling me, hey, no, that was wrong. But generally that doesn't happen. You know, generally I went the way they intended. They just said the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, sometimes I'll ask them, like, do you mean to my right? And they're like, uh, and they can hear them. I can hear them like scuff, you know, <laughs> shuffle their feet as they're doing a 180 to the, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but um, the other thing I found too was, um, people would hold out their hand, you know, to greet you or shake your hand. Yeah. And I'm, I don't see it. So I'm rude, you know, oh, how rude right. you won't shake my hand. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. see that. Sorry. <laughs> Especially like this year with everybody, like all the rules changing, you know, how people interact and greet each other or, or yeah. say goodbye. Like greeting, like still, I'm a pretty, you know, friendly guy and I'll, I'll, I'll generally offer my hand to somebody. Um, uh, to shake their hand especially if i'm meeting them for the first time and do an introduction but but saying you know goodbye or parting with somebody that's where it's awkward like culturally or, or just person to yeah. person like what their goodbye ritual is if it's a fist bump or handshake or just a nod or a catch you later or a hug right. you know like that's where i you know i don't really know a set standard and for anywhere it's pretty common to do some kind of handshake or something like that when you meet somebody but when you're parting ways like uh, I'm, I've left all kinds of people hanging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, even my, my brother-in-law, he, he did it for the longest time. Cause he's one of those guys. He's every time you go to his house or you meet, he, he always holds his hand out for a, for a handshake, a greeting handshake. And it took him, oh man, it took him months where he would go, what, what? And I'm like, what? And he's like, you want to shake my hand? I'm like, remember? He's like, oh, that's right. Yeah. So now he. Now he, he holds his hand up way high and he kind of puts it in front of my face <laughs> and kind of like dangles it there. So like, Hey, I, I want to shake your hand instead of that, that waist high thing, you know, where yeah. I, I can't see. So yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's, what, it's funny. What about entertainment? Uh, do you listen to audiobooks? Uh, I do listen to audiobooks every once in a while. Uh, entertainment is, I watch. I do still watch TV. Um, do you use the audio description uh, function? Sometimes I do. I do. I've I've played with it. Um, I find it very interesting and helpful. Yeah. Because I do. I do the scanning thing. You know, like sometimes my wife will say, "Did you even see that that happened?" You know, and I'll be, "Oh no, what?" Because I'm looking at a different part of the screen. Like right. I'm looking at a main character, and I I missed that little part off to the side. Um, so yeah, I started using that, that descriptive, you know, part do of you it. Have a, do you have a really big screen, um, like for your TV or for your computer? And do you try to sit closer to try to get more? Uh, we do have, we do have bigger, bigger screen TVs. Uh, the one downstairs is pretty big. I forget how big it is. It's pretty big, but, uh, yeah, I can, the further back I am, the more. I can see of it. Um, I, the less scanning I have to do. Yeah. Um, I haven't been at a movie theater in I don't know how many years because I just cannot see. Yeah. Everything. It's it, it, it'd be like watching a tennis match. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, I I watch I watch some some TV. I'll I'll, I'll do a lot of the, the YouTube stuff. Um. Anything else for entertainment? Any sports or uh, uh, outdoor well, activities? I, or anything? I was from the age of sixteen until I couldn't do it anymore. I was actually a lighting technician for bands. I ran light shows. Oh, nice for uh, for rock bands. Yeah, and I love that. So I actually have a bunch of bunch of crap. That's why another reason why I got into the YouTube thing. I have an old mixing board and this, and I have all kinds of old gear. So I blew the dust off of it and fired it up and I use it to make videos. And, uh, I play guitar, um, nice. not very well, but I play, I make, I make enough noise and it's nice enough where people don't cringe and run away. So <laughs> yeah, your, yeah, uh, your intros like for your videos, did you was something your, of your creation or did you just piece together other people's stuff? Uh, I have a friend of my, actually a long time friend who was one of the bass players in, in the one band that I've known for forever. He does uh, everything. He does the music stuff. He, 
sits down and he he'll sing and play the bass, play the drums, play the guitar parts, play keyboard parts or anything. So he's the one that actually put the uh the intro yeah. together for me. He makes little clips for me for stuff and does things like that for me to help me out. Cool. He's, he's the music whiz. Um yeah, I'll, I'll do sometimes I'll do something like, hey man, I got this little thing and I'll play a little riff or something and he'll take and run with it and make me some music and stuff. Nice. But yeah, he's the music guy. Uh, uh are you connected or active in any visual impairment or blind communities? No, I am not. I am I am not. I uh I went to after I went to the blind association and uh got hooked up with a caseworker and all that and we went through stuff and sat down and decided, you know, what what I needed, what I wanted and what I needed and what he had suggestions for. And, you know, we talked about Braille and all that. And he's like, there's no sense in you learning Braille because it's one of those use it or lose it things. And since you have sight, you're probably not going to use it and to sit and go through all that madness and trying to learn it and not use it. And then when it comes time to when you do need it, you're not going to remember it if you don't use it. Um, so it was basically the mobility training um, and and show me some stuff. Oh, lighting. Uh, we went through different uh, different types of lights, lighting, the, the cool blues, and went through all the different temperatures of lights, which I was a little bit familiar with just from yeah. my light shows. But uh, we figured out which would be best for me for a working environment in a, you know, at, at a desk or something. Um, I have a couple of different pairs of sunglasses. Uh, I have ones that I wear all the time, even in the house. Then I have a special pair for uh, the winter when there's snow, when everything's white and there's just, you know, sun glaring off of white. Right. And I just can't see anything at all. Um, so I have a, it's actually they're rose colored glasses, believe it or not. I was going to um, ask with what color the tints were. Yeah. Yeah. It was, they were, they're rose colored and it helps the best. We tried all kinds of the, the, the guy went through we went through the amber and blues and all kinds and it, and it seemed that the the rose colored ones were the best for me anyway yeah there's that, an actual term i forget there's a um a technical term for the um using different color color lenses to refract and bend the light to different frequencies so then it 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 has like a direct effect on your brain and then you know that affects uh, all kinds of stuff like mood and, and, um, it's, it's really interesting, but, um, um, can I, can I ask you a question? Were, were you always blind or? No. Uh, so I had vision most of my life. Um, and, uh, had a series of brain injuries in the military and, um, it's been a steady degradation and loss over time. So then yeah. you do your, not like me, but you have recollection of things and what they did look like. And, you know, you. Yeah, it's very similar to, to your story. And um, so I've, 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 you know, reference points for, for a lot of things. And yeah. it, uh, the, you know, the, the grieving process with independence, you know, very similar. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But the other, another question I always get a lot is, 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 is it black? And I was like, no, it's not, it's not there. Right. You know, cause I'm, I, I always tell sighted people I'm like, what do you see directly behind you? Do right. you see black? No, it, you don't, it's not there. You don't know, you know, yeah, <laughs> I said, it's the same thing. It's not, I don't see black. It's not yeah. like what was there is just now blacked out. No, it does not exist. It's not there. And that's yeah. kind of a, a hard concept for sighted people to grasp sometimes. Right. I'll do, I'll use that same uh, analogy. I like I'll hold something behind their head or I'll tell them to put their hand behind their head and say, okay, what does your hand look like? Or what does this, what does this look like? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> does it look like a bunch of blackness? Like, well, no, I'm like, okay, then. Yeah. You know. the, well, how much can you see? And I, I, what I always tell them to do, I say, get your toilet paper roll and just hold it up and look through that. That's approximately, that's yeah. the best thing I can tell you that you would, you know, have access to, to even get you close to what I can see. And then I always tell the ladies, I'm like, Hey, when I'm looking at you, 
I can pretty much see your face. So if I'm looking at your boobs, it's very obvious. I can't hide. <laughs> I can't hide it. It's real obvious. I'm staring. <laughs> uh, uh, well, we got anything? Other questions? Are we good? Yeah. Have you ever had any problems with, um, you know, using your cane or any anything else for getting equal access to places? Uh, let me see. I've been, I've been actually very fortunate in that degree. Uh, a lot of times people will offer help. Yeah. Um, like I was in, I, I live in, I live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which is the capital of Pennsylvania. And so I was at the Capitol building one time and, um, Actually, I was with my instructor at the time and he, he wasn't with me. He was there, but he wasn't right, right with me. So I'm roaming around the Capitol and, you know, people are like, can I help you with something? Do you need me to help you take it? And so there are a lot of people offer up, you know, help. Um, and when we go to the grocery store, the wife and I will go in and I will go in and situate myself out of the way while she goes over and gets a cart and gets the little scanner thing and right. write the thing down and all that stuff. So I'm kind of like standing there minding my own until she get, does everything and then comes over. And more than once I've been standing there and someone will come over and say, hey, do you need any help? Do you need me to take, you know, take you to an aisle or take you to somewhere? Or, you know, so a lot of times people often will ask if I need any assistance or anything. Yeah. And as far as getting into buildings or getting into places, I really haven't had anything that I can remember that was an obstacle or yeah. a what about or... What about this? Have you ever been uh, in a fast food restaurant? Um, like you, you may have just got dropped off or, or they're parking the car or... Uh, yeah, maybe in the bathroom. And so you're wanting to order and you're standing in front of the counter and nobody addresses you. Have you ever had that, that experience? Uh, trying to think. I don't know. I, not that I can remember. I, <laughs> I really have, I mean, even, even at the DMV, believe it or not, yeah, I because uh, we have to have our state ID. It's not a driver's license, but a state ID. And it runs out the same as a, if you did have a license every so often, five years, whatever it is. I have to go in, and I will go in, and I'll go up to the counter, and they'll ask me what I'm there for, and they'll hand me this paper that I have to have. Yeah, and then um, they'll tell me what room I have to go to to get my photo ID, and I'll walk in there and oftentimes it's packed and someone will come to me and say um what are you here for and what blah 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 you know is it an id or whatever and i'll tell them and they'll say okay well just stand here one moment and then they'll say okay you're next and they'll take me in and get me out of there while there's yeah. you know 50 other people <laughs> waiting in line very angry at me because sure. i just went in and they took care of it. but i i really haven't found that i've had any I guess, discrimination or, uh, wasn't able to access anything. Uh -huh. um, once in a while, there's a place where it's, it's a little bit of a pain because say, for instance, they're doing a little bit of something I have to go through like stones or mud or something like that. And the cane just like digs in or, right. you know, things like that, especially like stones and gravelly stuff or uneven sidewalks is a real pain too. Yeah. You know, you're walking all of a sudden, blam, you get that, that shot of that little thing where you're king doesn't roll over it it hits yep get jabbed a bit yeah you get that poke in the in the ribs and mm -hmm. but that's pretty much probably the worst that happens to me actually all right uh I, i've had that in the fast food um area if i'm going into order for the family or if you know my driver is in the bathroom or something and i'll i'm wanting to order but i think i think maybe part of that is they see me go in with somebody and assume that the person that I went in with is going to order for me. Yeah. You know? And yet I'm like trying to, you know, I'm centered up with the, the counter and I'm, you know, waiting in line. And then I, I move up with the line and, 
and then uh, then they come out of the bathroom or they you know they come in the store uh from the car because i've been in there for 10 or 15 minutes yeah and, and they're like what's going on i'm like i don't know like i thought i was in line like am i and they're like oh no they're, they're just they're staring at you i'm like oh great yeah can i, I order I, now i have that uh again i have that advantage where i have that little bit of sight but yeah you know, i, I notice people you know like for instance if we're out in a restaurant or something and i go to the to the bathroom of course you know my wife's not coming with me <laughs> in yeah. the men's room but yeah so when i'm in there you know and uh trying to navigate through places and get over to get you know your hands washed and find the soap and the towels and all that other stuff afterwards you know a lot of a lot of times yeah i can notice people like just getting out of my way yeah and and stuff like that some they don't offer assistance or direction they'll just get out of the way and let me go but others will say you know you didn't want any help or the towels are over here when they see me with my wet hands running around trying to find <laughs> yeah but yeah for the most part I, I really haven't found any big big issues really yet knock on all right mind. well uh you had any questions for us uh no but i would definitely appreciate a, a list of some of those things i wrote some things down made some notes absolutely but, man once as soon as we're done here i'll i'll shoot you an email with it and that's you, awesome. uh, go through some, it. Of, some of those things sounded really really awesome yeah i got i got a links uh um for a lot of them so some of them uh i think i have a couple youtube channels that i that i reference for you uh one of them i think it's called the blind life and he um you know is pretty up to date like he he does unboxing and he does testing of different um assistive tech so it's a really cool youtube channel to check out cool but uh so thank you for coming and spending some time with us telling us a bit about your story and how you navigate the world and overcome the uh, vision loss and again we have with us today our guest is blind views so definitely check them out give them a like and a subscribe and uh thanks for coming and sharing some of your views with us Hey, well, I appreciate you reaching out to me and I really enjoyed uh, talking to you and getting to know you a little bit and, and learning some new stuff that uh, could probably help me out in the future. I really do appreciate it, man. All right. Appreciate you coming on. Again, thanks to our, our friend who recommended you to us. So was a, we got an email with somebody who recommended reaching out to you. So our friend that uh, watches the channel, shout out to, to you and anybody that ha wants to recommend any uh, further content creators that you'd like us to interview, go ahead and email us at insightisfree at gmail.com. And thanks for tuning in. Peace and love to everybody. And Dave Presley Bear. <laughs>